o'clock to the tune of two o'clock. Uh, welcome to Brainerd City Community Development Redevelopment Agency, June 15th, <coughs> 2 p.m. Uh, this meeting is now called to order. Are there any citizens who would like to comment and that are not on items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none, we move down to the consent agenda. Two items. Minutes and land use. Well, the land use agreement's pulled, right? Yes, Mr. Chair, if we could pull out uh, 3B, and um, I've spoken with the developer. Um, instead of trying to approve something and potentially amending it in the future, we'd like to do it the right way. And there's been some new development, so um, we want to work out the details and come back in July. Okay, excellent. Which leaves us with the minutes. I need a motion, motion or a second? Approve. Okay. Do you have a second? No. I'll second. Motion a second. All in favor to approve the minutes, um, the March 23rd meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Presentations. Number 4A, Economic Base Summary Report. Ta-da! <laughs> Ta-da. You look familiar. Are we getting it again? <laughs> well. Yes, Peter Altman, Business Flare. And this has, a, we have some different slides, and I'm not going to try to re uh, go over things we've already talked about, and I'm sure you all have had a long meeting, but let me find the, uh, find the, the second one on the left side, second one from the bottom, the other one, on one more, oh, I'm sorry, third one from the bottom. This is yep. the. Oh, is that this the? Is the, is this the big document or the? Uh, okay. <coughs> I think it is. Oh, look to the right. That's the CRA board meeting. Aha. Uh -huh. It might be that one. This is it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then I'm going to hit something here to get rid of that. Speaking. Can you make it bigger or? Make it into like a. Hmm. Uh, now I'm getting smaller. Pardon me. So look down at the bottom, maybe. Where's that sign now? Did you all have time for lunch today? Yes. Yeah, look, see down along the bottom? The little arrow thing? Oops. Okay. This one? Or this one? Yeah, right there. <coughs> so we kind of start with the same story, which is the six drivers of economics and, and my company, Business Flare, uh, having the ability to uh, work both for the city at large and for the CRE districts. Thank you very much. Um, today's agenda is just to uh, review. You've seen this slide. Uh, capital, land, labor, markets, regulations, and quality of life. So everything we do, we try to find that it uh, has some beneficial aspect to one of those drivers of economic growth. Um, these trends uh, that we looked at briefly uh, and discussed uh, uh, identify the main takeaway here, which is that the central CRA district having the lowest uh, uh, income, the highest family size and the youngest children, uh, to go to uh, uh, Director uh, Sanders' question, we'll get drilled down into that to see, but many of the young folks who will become the workforce are living more, uh, they're more densely uh, uh, in that district than the other two. Uh, the 14th Street District also uh, has an interesting uh, uh, situation, their average uh, spent on a mortgage is, uh, is about the same. Uh, their population is between that and that in the uh, downtown in the, the Bradenton CRA district. Um, and they're also in the middle in terms of their uh, population uh, distribution. Uh, the education is an interesting uh, issue as well. Only 7% of the central CRA residents are identified as having a degree a college degree or higher. 
24% in the Bradenton district and 12% uh, uh, with a degree only in the 14th Street district. So uh, <clears throat> education is probably going to be a, a comment that will arise as we continue to talk, and, and particularly when it comes to job training, even occupational training, uh, education uh, could be a good opportunity. Can I ask a question or do you want yes, to Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Uh, rather than using median or maybe you, uh, would it be helpful maybe to more do average or maybe both? Because maybe that's why that seems skewed. It, it, it's helpful to see both, isn't it? I mean, what's that person mm -hmm. in the middle mm -hmm. and then what's the average of all? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that can help to identify how many of these are, uh, as is quite prevalent in Florida, grandparents <coughs> raising a child versus folks in the middle, uh, or a single grandparent and three children. So there's a, there's a wide variety of differences in the households, but the bottom line is we know that there are uh, more people in each household, which is gonna to speak towards perhaps children, and the average age being younger helps to support that. But yeah, I think that's worth diving into. I know it's a question of interest. Same with the household income, because there could be a pretty big, dis you know, we've heard that that the difference is be getting worse. So maybe you've got some people that are pretty right. high and some people right. pretty and That high. may also answer a question mm -hmm. from the earlier city meeting where somebody could be making a million dollars and that certainly covers it's, a lot of differential exactly. between what would be uh, where most people found themselves. <laughs> I, I think the next slide will also help to um, give us more segmented uh, tapestry for each district. So we talked earlier that citywide, the largest uh, population was in a retirement community. Uh, but in the CRA district tapestry, um, front porches uh, is the identifier for uh, a lot of folks that are in there. And their median income is still up in the 40s, 43, where the retirement community's median income, uh, which comes behind that, is only slightly below. But then uh, small town simplicity uh, has a, a little less household income in the 30s. But in the Bradenton CRA district, those are all much higher numbers, especially in, in the majority uh, that you have there, which is some 90% oh, uh, of the population being segmented into those three areas. Um, the central CRA district tapestry, the majority of the folks in those segments are known as city commons with an income of 18,000, uh, where there is still a significant uh, percentage of 22% in what they call forging opportunity. And we can get better definitions to give an explanation of what those tapestries mean. Uh, but this is just showing the results of the uh, data to give a point to discuss moving forward. Um, where hometown heritage income is uh, 28,000. So, uh, and that represents about 21, 22,000. Uh, but in all cases, uh, the uh, average households are, are larger, but the forging <coughs> opportunity segment uh, of the tapestry has a, a household of 3.62. So. Uh, a couple of children can help to make going to work a little more important sometimes in terms of how big the jobs that you pursue or the revenue that you're able to bring in to, to, uh, to handle that. Um, and then in the 14th Street, uh, another whole kind of partial new set of tapestries uh, with 43% being called uh, New West, New West residents. Uh, which have average household sizes also large, median ages young in the 27 range, and household income uh, is, is not uh, so high, but it is uh, in the $30,000 range. Uh, that's a good chunk of the uh, households there, uh, and also represents, as the picture I think would show, some family, uh, larger size family. Uh, the Social Security set is the other uh, household income there is only 17,000, so there's a good number of population, <coughs> almost 20%, one in five households where the uh, revenue under is understood as being basically Social Security uh, and household income. Uh, then the front porches, again, uh, 
also sort of in the middle in terms of age and incomes being uh, of the best uh, income. Uh, and so, um, this was the business summary. There were some questions. Uh, we did go to the uh, advisory uh, group yes, last night and there were a number of questions like, how can there be no business but employees? Where are the school employees that we know there are schools there? I'm gonna get some refined answers to the questions we've already heard. Uh, to look into this, but this may well be based on occupational licenses or businesses that have employees that don't work there. So this slide is from last night, gonna need some better explanation uh, that I don't have to give you today. <coughs> the, each of the districts then, there, uh, there's a wheel uh, to show uh, what the dominant um, industries are within them. And my best, uh, guess at these color wheels, which will come back and get better definition of which is which, is that healthcare and social assistance uh, is the largest part of the uh, Bradenton CRA district. Am I right? Or is that That's the government? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and that's the hospital, it's public, right? It's public well administration is the second one. Yeah, which is your government building. Yeah. So, um, Next into the central CRA district, this is where we get the, uh, uh, we're believing that's the manufacturing, and that would result from employees theoretically that are either with Bells or with uh, the Tropicana um, facility. And in our previous slide, which matches with this, it said there were three of these major employers in that field, and the question is, what's the third one? So we'll drill down and try to get some information uh, and for us, we'll be analyzing this data as well as we go. Um, also, if we can keep in mind that uh, our agreement has us updating this data every three months, not to put you through a, a long uh, process, but to say some of these things have changed as in valuations of, of housing or rental rates, uh, et cetera. Um, and this is the Bradenton CRA district, again, um, showing the uh, what am I going up and down, set it down, okay. This uh, slide talks about the- I don't think you showed us the 14th. Did I not? Not the wheel on the 14th Street, thank you. Uh, I went up. Uh, 14th uh, in that uh, purple color is again- um, Healthcare. Public. So healthcare is the number one, and then I believe public administration shows as number two. Is that maybe the school board, the public administration? Is that why? Right. No. Uh, I mean, because I think the school board's the biggest employer, isn't it? Well, I, is, this, is this for employees or businesses? These are a number of employees. It's the, the, this, the business mix by that. But if yeah. you go up to this other one and we look here at the, what are we going to take? Education yes. system Perfect. seems to be low on employees where the, um, Public administration in, we are what, in the 14th district, right? That's here. Uh, uh, we've got 409 in healthcare, 365 in public administration, and uh, 260 are spread around elsewhere. But uh, we'll get, uh, dig in and try to get some of the answers to that uh, that I cannot give you today. This is a, a look at the real estate market, the uh, Bradenton CRA district markets, and, and we have one slide for each district. It's hard for folks to read. Uh, probably the takeaways are where the clusters are by the scatter chart there, uh, where you see the retail, uh, where you see the office, uh, if there is industrial, uh, and if there is multi, and where multifamily is located. Um, there's a number of uh, details in there. Uh, the biggest, I guess, surprise, or if not surprise, uh, a thing of note, is that the absorption rate in Bradenton is practically everything that's available is absorbed. So there's not much inventory that's out there. Uh, and in some cases, inventory is identified if it's something's for sale, so it doesn't mean there's not a vacant property somewhere. But uh, in terms of anything listed or available, uh, in in just about every case, uh, the absorption rates are, have been uh, pretty phenomenal, which, which is consistent with 
this great migration that we talked I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Peter, that includes office? Because we, 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 we always had, we've always had an office glut of, of available. So it's not anymore? Um, the, uh, there is not much that's listed, uh, but there's details within that larger document that uh, we okay. can drill into, uh, and you can find yeah, it interesting. That would be interesting to find out if that's changed, because that's just something we've always had. There's yeah, and, and uh, Katarina, if I might, uh, if it's okay, if you get questions or things, if you want to sort of consolidate them, and then I can yes. make a make an appointment to go through those with the staff and get uh, maybe answers on a weekly basis or some kind of regular basis. And single family isn't is that just lumped in with the multifamily or? Uh, this one, no. I think this one does not have a single family uh, real estate market uh, identifier on it. So there's one question already for our list. So let's find out how okay. that's going. Um, Central CRA uh, uh, District, uh, the 9th Avenue, sort of between, is it 9th Street and 9th Street or somewhere the historic downtown area of the uh, 9th Avenue um, would be the place that you would see um, some retail. Uh, there isn't much uh, that's remaining, uh, which makes it an opportunity. Um, and then on industrial, uh, you all know the locations of those, so uh, they're just shown on the chart in order to identify um, those clusters uh, for evaluation and, and see what you can do. Um, the rates for the uh, retail market, uh, $18, $19 a square foot. The office market uh, and the industrial rates are, are there. And again, the markets are listed there as having no vacancy. Those big structures are owned by individual organizations that don't, doesn't mean there's not capacity within them or size for them to be able to uh, be more productive economically than they are, uh, but they're, they're not out on the market for rent according to this. Um, and the number of uh, multifamily units is 588 and the market rate per unit uh, is $955. Um, uh, which can also speak to the age of some of the multifamily market and or other um, any kind of rent controls or anything else that might be in place. Um, the sales price per unit though uh, surprised me because it's showing at $171,000 per unit. Uh, wow, which is not a high price, but when you go back and look at the, uh, at the 14th Street, um, I think I noticed that the sale price per unit of multifamily there is 113,000. So um, those, are, those are relatively low uh, compared to the Bradenton uh, sales price of 237,000. Yes, ma'am. Just, just to share with you, um, there's a house near me that was built in 1920, uh, but it was very well uh, remodeled, you know, high-end stuff. It went for 200, mm -hmm. so it, there are few going higher now. Yeah. Well, but that's not even going to be in this because that would have been single family probably. Yeah, you're right. I think we're okay, missing. I, I think we're missing a chunk. Yeah. yeah. So we'll yeah. we'll get a single yeah. family report to you, and that's uh, part of the purpose of this initial exercise with you as well. Um, this diagram is done by, through uh, some placer uh, data, which is tracking. Uh, movement and, and foot traffic and the like uh, and understanding the types of activities that are going on and it does show uh, sort of the, uh, the the mustache along the river being the, the, the river walk and the nature preserve so green is the area for some parks uh, the, uh, the light oh, I, I got the last person to call it <coughs> the color but I'm half between orange and yellow so uh, the live component uh, is spread around um, while the work and create component seems to be uh, sort of matching up with the Village of the Arts and, and the central uh, CDD while uh, the destination component uh, is right there, right here, right where we are uh, in a circle. Uh, so the opportunities there as you look at that 
graph uh, is to see ways to uh, develop connectivity that can share the benefits of the natural waterfront and the river and the lifestyle of the downtown uh, and, uh, and reach out and, and gain customers uh, from within the city uh, and also maybe expand uh, the interest of uh, commerce uh, beyond it. So uh, that being said, uh, we're at the sort of next steps uh, which we would like to identify opportunity sites. There's already been uh, a comment at the last CR meet a meeting to look uh, with uh, the development that has the McDonald's, the triangular property. We've been in touch with the property owner and the developer who has agreed to meet with us and, and chat about what our findings are. And we hope that we can support uh, uh, by market analysis uh, the best use for that property. Uh, to benefit the, the residents and also to provide a rate of return that's that's necessary for investment. Um, the uh, impact studies, these economic impact assessments we, we do, uh, which is a crossover between looking at opportunity sites and sort of planning and looking at the, at the impact of what you're doing economically, uh, not only to the bottom line or not just for, for tax receipts for your tax increment, but also the impact that it has on the existing residents and uh, the support of the retail. Uh, we'd like to highlight some redevelopment processes and benefits. We, we have uh, strong uh, data that uh, Kevin Crowder, who's the owner of the company, will bring. Um, I get to, uh, as the former CPA, do this, provide you with the analysis. Kevin will be here with me and to talk with you about some of the uh, opportunities we find. But the ninth, and it says Ninth Street, I think it should be saying Ninth Avenue, am it I right? It should be saying Ninth Avenue. Ninth Avenue, so that's a, uh, a misstep on that, but Ninth Avenue corridor visioning is something that uh, Katarina will speak about. Uh, and uh, on the public engagement, just like to remind you that this is the, um, really the, uh, sweet spot for our organization is to help as a partner in identifying ways in which you can outreach to the community and participating, uh, whether it's in a charrette uh, or a one-on-one -on -one or working with your stake, uh, stakeholders in town. Uh, but we would like very much to be involved in that visioning so that we can incorporate uh, those concepts and your feelings into uh, whatever recommendations are made. And finally, as from the first time I was here, just to reiterate that our goal is to implement. So we would like to find things we could do right away. I know you all had moved at the last meeting right away with your uh, event uh, support and encouraging and, and making that stronger and better. Uh, I would like very much for you to, we're talking about doing this with your boat show or your, your, uh, uh, your it wasn't Regatta. a boat show, your, the regatta? The regatta, but also uh, for the previous festival you had in December, the uh, jazz festival. Uh, blues. The blues. Blues festival. But that was on Ninth Street, or Ninth, I'm sorry. Yes, well, it was this last Lee time, but I'm it won't sorry. be the next time. It's yeah. the blues festival. Those right. events that bring traffic into town, we can do a snapshot and tell you just how many people came, where they came, where they shopped, the kind of money they spent. And uh, that would be part of our just ongoing thing. So this sort of broad uh, placer data has a much more uh, effective use when we look at particularly events to see what kind of traffic it has created and whether that traffic stays for how long to shop, or to do things, <coughs> or what they did when they left that maybe you could have here to capture those dollars. That's my uh, presentation. I appreciate it. I know it's been uh, a long time uh, coming, and we're very excited for continue to work with you. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But thank you. No thank questions? You. We did them all along. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, proposed for, for future community policing innovations in the CRA's BPD. Mr. Chair, I've, I'm requesting if we can move, uh, take this item out of the agenda, and uh, the chief and I are going to get together and work out some details and update and provide um, this presentation to you at the next CRA meeting. Perfect. 
Then moving down to item 5A, 14th Street CRA, Low Bar Corporation Land Purchase. As you all know, we are the proud owners of five um, properties in the heart of the village. Um, used to belong to the Lower Bar Corporation, and after, and uh, you know the days here, you all approved the purchase of the pro uh, of these properties back in December. Mm -hmm. We've done our due diligence. We went through environmental site assessment phase one. Uh, all the surveys and on Thursday, this past Thursday, we closed and um, no, I hit my knee. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> and um, on Monday morning, and this is a map of the properties. Uh, three of them are vacant lots, and two of them ha have existing structures on them. On uh, Monday morning, CRA staff, along with staff from uh, the building official and uh, public works and the PD, uh, we went to do an inspection of the sites. And I do have a presentation to show you the condition of these properties. This is not moving. escape there you go All right. new IT director um, So the first one, uh, even though the numbering on the property says 1103, on the property appraiser is identified it as 1101, 13 Avenue West. And I do, I want to make sure we have that legally that some of them can be graphic. So, <laughs> so be prepared. Um, so this is the outside. We weren't able to go inside uh, to this property, but as you can see, there are several <laughs> components even missing. Um, from this, and this is from different sides of the house, the condition of it from roofing to the walls. And again, going back, a lot of um, issues with, with it. I was able to go to one of the windows and and try to take a picture. So that's the inside of one <coughs> of the rooms. Um, so as you can see, it's not in the best of conditions. Um, we were able to go into the 1111 13th Avenue West, and this is uh, the one one of the bathrooms. Got some creative plumbing. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how many code violations we could probably find with with these. This is on the back yard, the picture from the backyard. Some from the inside. If you see here, you cannot see it very well, but uh, all these were things making noise and flies and insects. Um, so all the black stuff that you see is, is actually living things. And so those were kind of some of the pictures. Um, Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> we, um, what we need is guidance from you on how to proceed in approximately two months ago, you had mentioned you would like those demoed immediately. In the meantime, there was some request from the village of the, uh, from the artist guild, um, if they could use any of these, one of them to potentially um, renovate it and make it into a community uh, type of center uh, or a visitor center. Um, we did get quotes about 16,000 to demo its property. Um, each property or in total? Each property is going to be about 16. Each property? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I've gotten two estimates on both. Yeah. And 
and um, it, we're looking the earliest mid-July, anywhere between mid-July to end of July. We're trying to make it as, as fast as we can, mm. but we need to know if you'd like us to demolish both properties or just one. Um, the building official is here to give his professional opinion on the structure of the, the two properties. And I will say that I would say my professional recommendation would be all to uh, demolish both and then decide how what to do with the site. Good afternoon. Uh, Patrick Windsor, your building official for the city of Bradenton. Um, after looking at the pro projects, the, the, the properties and the scope of work that it would entail to bring them up or to do a renovation on them, it would bring it into, you've got three levels of construction, a level one alteration, which is replacing a door and a window or so. A level two would be kitchen remodeling, bathrooms, window replacement. This would fall into a level three alteration, which means that the entire structure would have to be brought up to current code. It can't be done. It would, you would have to start over because none of the, uh, my, my opinion is none of the foundations are going to work for current current code um, the wiring the plumbing everything it's a uh, you would pretty much have to start all over again anyway it would never it would never fit it would never work for a, a level three construction I checked out the one the, the the concrete house had the old twist in fuses did the second house have those two I I wasn't one of the ones that went in right. um, I didn't see that and if it's got those old panels then it's probably got knob and tube wiring in it so it's uh, right. there's. Well, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Barney. I think I've seen enough. <laughs> um, I am going to make a motion that we stand by our original decision to have both properties demolished, and the sooner the better, because my concern is they appear to be open. Open. They appear to be. And, and, and we can we can go and board them up and then people will go and try to take them down. Um, it's an attractive nuisance. It would be something that someone, and God help us if a child got in there and got hurt, I think it needs to be taken, I, I want both properties taken down and as soon as possible. And that my motion is that we continue with the original action that this board took. Second. Uh, yeah. Hey, can I just ask some questions, though, <laughs> real quick about yeah, yeah. with the concrete block one? Um, you know, some of that stuff doesn't, I mean, like you can rewire and, you know, but you said the foundation. What's wrong with the foundation? Well, current code requires that the foundation be a minimum or a minimum depth and a minimum width, and the steel has to be in the footer. If these footers have steel in them, I would be shocked. And in block construction and in, in masonry construction, every say 43 inches, you have to have a filled cell, or however the, the engineer designs it. But the filled cell, you have to have a continuous tie from the footer all the way to the truss. That's not happening in these houses. I mm -hmm. it just they they didn't have to do it back then. So. I would be shocked if it was built anywhere close to what was be required nowadays. It probably would cost more than that would be worth to do. So, I mean, I I just was curious when you said about the foundation. Well, you know, and when I looked at it, like especially the, like the concrete one on the corner. I, I mean, it was built as an inexpensive duplex. You know, I mean, it was mm -hmm. a concrete. It was like there was no no thought put into what trying to make it an attractive building at all. Um, I, uh, don't worry about it. I, I think they're they're a liability. We should. I agree with the motion. I'm ready. I mean, I, if, if if there were if there were a building that had like some potential architectural, mm -hmm. you know, they're not his, they're not historic. No. They are a slum. Right, slum and blight. Mm -hmm. And we our job is to eliminate slum and blight. Mm -hmm. Let's eliminate I, I, it. I'll call the question. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, I just take the no. I don't. Yeah, I, I, take, I had a motion and a second. There's a motion and a second. Anyone else want to chime in before we vote? Good bones, fragile bones, fragile bones. Fragile, very fragile. 
I, I would. I, I don't think this motion includes that, but I would like to uh, make sure that we uh, get some more beds, and I could probably help out on that. Uh, I, that sounds awful high because I just got one not that long ago, and it wasn't near that, and I thought it was too much. But uh, we would love that if you I, I if you give us, we'll contact I'll, I'll them absolutely. Help out with that, but you know things have changed. You know, uh, it, overnight well, things. But this know. wasn't that a couple of months yeah. ago. Yeah. I wouldn't put too much. I, I agree with you. It seems high to me. That everything has been like I know. doing a reno has been. Yeah, I think sometimes everything's been at least twice what I expected it to be. Well, and, and you know, the one, the concrete house is going to have a lot of weight to it. I mean, it's going to, it's not going to be an easy. The other, the one house is going to be a pushover. It just and seems then, like they're going to bring a claw in and just. Yeah, but it's still, it but it's still, time. it's concrete. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's disposal. It's the tonnage. Is disposal. Ton tonnage is going to add up. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a third garage. No. It, they're based on tonnage, yeah. Yeah. Number, number of tons. So. Without, you ready to take a vote? Without seeing the blueprints of the original house, even the one with the brick, you would think that it's wood construction behind the brick. Yes. I believe that might be a masonry structure also. Because inside the windowsill, it's like a nine inch wall. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. may be masonry behind the brick. Mm. I'm not positive, but that's what it appears to be because of the depth of the windowsills, mm -hmm. the wall. Okay. All right. They're slung, they're blighted. So um, anyone else want to want to call the vote? All right. All in favor of moving forward with demo, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, when I grew up in that neighborhood, I can remember there were two old cracker houses there. And they were taken down. And then what was there was put up probably about 19. 66, 67, mm. and um, mm. it, uh, I don't think we would be doing the Artist Guild any favors mm -hmm. by trying to encourage them to redo one of those houses. I, it's no, 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 no. Well, and I'll remind the board, Just we had, we had, um, a deal to buy the raw land for 350, mm -hmm. and then the seller wanted 400 for those two corners, which was ridiculous. But we pay. I know I voted to pay, do it because I wanted to mow them down. Mm -hmm. That's I was willing to spend extra money to make the eyesore go away. I mean, our, our goal is elimination slum and blight. That is our mantra, and there's only one way to eliminate slum and blight: with a bulldozer. Okay. Mr. Chair, as part of next steps, um, when would you like me to, what is, uh, we would like to hear your vision. I know in the past we briefly discussed about what could, put the, what would the board like the site to be, but because we didn't have the properties under control, we said we're going to defer that discussion. I'm looking for guidance. When would you be ready all to discuss it so we can bring it back? Okay. Could we discuss it at our next meeting? We could, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Get the property down and... and I think sometimes it's easier, oh. I know it's easier for me to be able to visualize something when I'm looking at something that's it's gonna, raw. It, it's it's going to look great when we get those built because it's, it's a big chunk of land. I mean, every time I go by there, I, I it's bigger than I remember, mm -hmm. you know. So I just wanted to show you, I want to give Katarina some kudos. This is my 24, my 2014 Old Republic <laughs> calendar book, right? <laughs> And this yellow block on February 11th was when I met with Richard Green mm. to see if uh, this acquisition was possible, even though I've been warned by Mike Carter and uh, Ron Allen that there's no deal to be had there, but I tried anyway. And all these years later, eight and a half years later, we finally have it. You proved him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I want to point out in our minutes today um, that we approved on the second page, was um, Bill Webster came in and made an announcement that he'd bought property. And in the last paragraph, it says here, and he pointed out that the sculpture on 9th in front of the Manatee Apparel needed attention as far as lighting replacement and suggested that it relocate to the heart of the village. And it says here the chalk Roth agreed. 
when I sit, when I went down and I look at that the 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 Crucible launcher, uh -huh. when you go down ninth and you look at it, there's the power poles there, there's the the stuff that Manatee Apparel had. It just gets lost. You don't you don't see it. And that was an expensive piece of art expensive. that needs to be painted, mm -hmm. which will probably be laid on its side or I don't I don't know how we would do that. But um, it's power cut. I think the artist has to do it, doesn't it? No. We would have to review the contract, but it will no, be. I think it has to be done by the artist. Anyway, it, I'm it sure it's going to be some, yeah. You know, if we were to take that and put it in a big open corner, it would be Shazam. I need to talk to, to engineering. I remember the footer ended up having to be doubled on right. it. So I don't know what getting it out would be like. Yeah. But anything could be both. But I think if, if we could come prepared to discuss it at our July okay. meeting, that would be good. Absolutely. I just wanted to point out it was in our minutes. Just, it just so happened it was in the minutes today. We'll so. do our best to try to have it demolished by then, depending on their availability. But, um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. I'll bake okay. them a pie. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Um, Moving on to item six, Braden and CRA. Gene Keene, Building and Site Enhancement Program. At 101 Manatee Avenue West. So in case you're not aware, or in case location-wise this is the building that Folly Bryant had occupied for a number of years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I do apologize for my voice. Um, back in 2020, in December, Mr. Keene and his wife approached the CRA and asked for a grant, which was approved for $10,000 for replacement of windows and entryway doors, um, also paint. The purpose of the windows and entryway doors were for a number of reasons. It upped the building as far as hurricane um, wind mitigation and things of that nature. Um, so, so this grant was approved. After that, there was a lapse in time where we had not, no one in the office had heard from Mr. Keene. And there was a number of different factors that played into um, the prolonged improvements. Um, <clears throat> in your package under the explanation, I've, I, you know, we've stated basically that the challenges of COVID um, really brought this project to its knees. Um, and as far as deliveries, uh, materials, shortage thereof, and labor. Uh, this is the picture of before, which is really not that great um, to see, but it does give you an idea of, you know, the amount of windows in the frontage of the building and the side on um, both 10th and Manatee Avenue. Um, <clears throat> that it does create, a, you know, a, a, a nicer facade with the painting, new windows and, and their new entryway doors. This is the after photo with the, right. with the fully painted. Um, the job has been, is, is now complete. It was completed and as far as painting. That, that also took a long time because naturally when you remove windows from a stone or masonry block, you have to wait, restucco after the windows go back in and then of course paint. So he has now completed uh, this uh, and he has come back and asked if that money would be considered as still available to him. Um, Mr. Keene has owned this building for a very long time. He's invested in the downtown Bradenton, um, in the core and other areas of the city. So I would like to ask you for your consideration of approving this motion and, and uh, allowing staff to disperse this $10,000 grant. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to move for approval of the um, 
disbursement of $10,000 to the applicant for the building and site enhancement grant for the property located at 1001 Manatee Avenue West. Second. Okay. There's a tie. Motion and a tie. Who wants it to her? Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Into the central CRA. Um, a update from community engagement and events, MLK Park and Love Park. Good afternoon. Let's see here. Have a computer. So as you are aware, um, we had to design your park events, one at MLK Park on June 2nd and the other at Love Park on June 7th. Um, it was great to see uh, Ms. Coachman out there, Mr. Sanders and Mayor Brown. They were out there engaging with the community and it was uh, much appreciated, I'm sure. Um, also, Mr. McKellen from Public Works was out there and attended, they had some, um, some charts, some, you know, things, some images about, you know, what could potentially be there of some playground equipment and different things. Um, and he was there to answer any questions that anybody would have. We also, big thank you out to Bradenton PD, uh, Sergeant Plant and uh, Officer Eric Williams. They helped set up, break down. They uh, came in with a barbecue and grilled some hot dogs. Thank you for your excellent barbecue skills. Um, everybody enjoyed them. So the goal of the event was to get ideas from the residents on what improvements they would like to see at the park. Um, we prepared a survey, as you can see here on the screen, um, with potential improvements. So there was a checkbox by those, and um, they could choose what they felt you know, um, the park needed. Um, as well as on the back side there, we had some um, some questions regarding safety and visits to the park themselves. So let me move on. Okay, so this is some pictures of what happened out there at the Martin Luther King Park. We'll start with this one. Um, as you see, Mayor Brown there, um, Mr. Saunders, Ms. Coachman, and residents, uh, the BPD, things like that. So we had a pretty good turnout. Um, with this event, we got uh, 20 surveys filled out. Um, by the residents there and um, we'll go to the results so here is a uh, on the top part is the results from the first page of the survey and based on these the five top five picks were swings uh, landscaping playground equipment fencing and tables um, other suggestions were, you know, lighting that we hadn't put on the survey were lighting, uh, security, community events inspired by MLK, Martin Luther King Jr., um, some additional parking, a restroom, a stage, and a rock wall. Um, as you see on the survey questions here, as far as visits there, 50% um, uh, said they never visited the park. and. Um, then I think the next, you know, 20% was two to three times, and 20% was a few times, where 5% was once monthly, and 5% was daily. So as far as when the when the improvements are um, are done, you have a high number of those people saying that they would visit the park after improvements were done. That's almost like I think it's about 85% um, on that, and then for we had park safety here um you know it's the highest highest number 50 percent was somewhat safe and then you know 25 percent was completely unsafe uh 15 percent completely safe and 10 percent somewhat safe mm -hmm. uh children in the household was you know 11 that the surveyors had nine not so almost 50 50 and then their familiarity with the cra which was 13 to 7 on those. So that was MLK Park. And then let me 
go to central. So our Love Park. So Love Park, um, we had a special guest there, uh, Mr. Clarence L. Love. Um, you know, a young 93 years old. Um, he was councilman from 76 to 80. And uh, it was great to have him out there. I mean, we really appreciated him coming out and giving us his, his support. It was an honor to meet him for all of us. Um, so you can see some pictures there of Mr. Love uh, and, and everybody and some kids there up in the, the right-hand corner playing some basketball on the court. So it was, a, you know, we had a little more there. We had about, 20, we had 25 completed surveys there. Seemed like there was a lot more people there. You know, maybe they didn't fill out the surveys, but there were, you know, kids and things like that. So here we have um, the top five was playground equipment at 18. Um, and then we had uh, landscaping, swings, a shade structure, and a water fountain. Um, we had a lot of other suggestions at this park. Um, you can see there it was 23 other. So in this park, um, they asked for lighting, security, community events, updates to the basketball court. They'd like to see volleyball, tennis, tetherball courts, a stage, a community garden, sidewalks leading into the park, um, and um, device charging station, and a splash pad. Um, the survey questions here, a little bit, a little bit different, um, you know, you have never at 31% um, visiting a park, uh, a few times at 31 uh, as well, 22% uh, once a month, and 13% two, two or three times, and 3% at daily. And then the park use after improvements was a high number, um, you know, kind of reflects the other park as well, you know, that the, the you know, people would love to see the improvements and would be happy to come back. Um, the safety of the park, it's somewhat safe at 47%, completely unsafe at 26%, completely safe at 11%, and 16% somewhat safe. Uh, children in a household, um, you know, there was, more, there was more people without children in the household, um, and then a couple unknowns that didn't check the box. That's what that is. And that familiarity with the CRA is about, you know, almost 50-50, a little, a little more than that. So um, that was the results of the survey. And um, what our next steps are is basically to um, have a meeting with the internal departments to discuss the results and what are feasible improvements that can maximize the allocated funds and with reflecting the residents' vision for the parks. Thank you. I just want to say a big thank you to my entire team for helping plan these events. Um, and as you can tell from the presentation, the newest addition to our team is just great. It's, it's been wonderful to work with Chris, and I think now the four of us, definitely a strong team and very happy, so. Great. I, let me say this. Um, I have definitely seen a difference in uh, some of the uh, residents that live near, because I live in that area as well. It really, it really made a big difference to them. They actually feel like, wow, this city kind of cares. So it was really, it was a success. Thank you. That's, that's great. So when, um, as we move forward, when do we think we can, uh, next steps over there? I mean, is it just planning now? How long is planning? We will take? need to get together with uh, definitely public works and whatever, whatever other department um, we would need to take these results um, and start the design process. Um, from ordering, I know Mr. McClellan has said there is a, you know, a wait. Uh, there's a few months to even get the equipment. So it might not be completely done this fiscal year, but we are going to be moving with immediately in the next week or so to get the process going. So the real work starts now. Good, good. Well, if I can ask in Love, in Love Park, if anyone suggests cutting down those southern pines that are there, I planted all those. So <laughs> I'd like to not see them. <laughs> Did you really? 
they did yeah, they yeah. give good shade so yeah, that was yeah, yeah we picked out they, yeah. we we chose southern southern trees yeah um i hated to have to miss, miss the event but i had a previously scheduled um family vacation with my three grandbabies and i couldn't miss it <laughs> but um i have recently seen some um pretty spectacular um handicap accessible uh, playground pieces and I know we have one on the river walk for the pirate ship and I know we've got one coming to Lewis Park I think I'd like to start putting that in the mix I know it increases costs maybe we can find private partnerships for it I don't know but I'd like to start seeing if we can get some more because I, I just watched something the other day online that they've got this new one up in New Jersey called Field of Dreams that is just spectacular and I thought, and you could see it on their faces to finally be able to go and play in the park. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if we can, I don't know if this is the right place to do it. I just want to start beating that drum a little bit. What did we budget for those parks, Katarina? We have budgeted 75,000 per park. Um, and I mean, if we need to move it up, we'll definitely come back for an adjustment. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, Mini L. Rogers site update. Um, we have uh, Mr. Peter, Peter Diario Jr. with us today to give an update on kind of the activity that they have been doing. And there's also some deadlines and future things with the Planning Commission, so he'll go over that. <clears throat> Peter Diario Jr. Fill in for <coughs> Peter Diario Sr., who's up in Connecticut at this time. Um, since our last uh, meeting, we've done a handful of things. Um, the first of is continue to follow up with the neighborhood uh, meeting that happened a couple of months ago. Um, the the neighborhood spoke that the vision had changed slightly, and we were looking at things like Family Dollar. Dollar Tree, other retailers that might be uh, supercuts or sports clips. Um, so we've been looking into some of those. Some of those companies are doing their own market review to consider. Uh, we were approached by one local um, company or business called the Judson Family Chiropractic, and they're a smaller company, but they might fit in the, the space. So we are open to that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, ooh, thank you. I will, I will get to the map momentarily. Um, well, we also are speaking with uh, Walgreens still and a vitamin shop that needs larger spaces. And again, I'll address that in the map uh, in a moment. Um, regarding the McDonald's, which is the, the, you know, the, uh, the carrot and the promised uh, tenant so far, we, are, we have applied for the special use permit um, and that's going to be discussed at the next uh, Planning Commission meeting, which is June 21st. Um, I did, I was informed though that it, that's more of a staff review and they're probably going to follow it up with. Yeah, it's DRC. Okay. For the three lands for your special use. Right, right. And then the actual hearing for that would be later, like in July or August. Um, but so this map, this map is uh, included in that special use permit. Um, it is a little bit updated. The last time uh, I spoke with you guys, um, you had more concerns about having the buildings on the main road instead of tucked back. And this um, sort of uh, continues with that direction. This is more form based code. Um, the McDonald's being the building on the east side. Um, the building in the center is a 10,000 square foot building, which we want to put someone like those larger tenants, like a Walgreens or the vitamin shop. And then uh, the new addition on the west side is a smaller 3,000 square foot building that can be two floors or possibly three floors um, with an elevator. And that could be used for smaller tenants like um, the Judson Family Chiropractic or the Supercuts. 
and that could be either 3,000 square feet for one company or it could be split in half, 1,500, 1,500. Um, uh, we don't have any tenants to even submit for approval, but that is a good plan, we think, for filling in whatever companies uh, you know will work for us. Mm -hmm. um, I did listen to Peter Altman, who began his, uh, his analysis, and uh, we got lots of demographics, updated demographics, but um, we'll see what else we can come up with. What he will also come up with for what the community needs, and we'll, we'll listen, of course. And do I have anything else for you? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. A question? Yeah, did, yes, please. Did FDOT give you the approval in and out of that uh, for the McDonald's Op 301? They, well, um, we submitted the special use permit, and they're going to review it, and then we could continue from there. Actually, I do think there was something about that. I didn't know where they was at in that process. Yeah, the uh, it's been filed, and the the what? meeting, the first meeting is uh, this month, the twenty oh. first, and I believe there's a follow up hearing uh, after. But when they're done with that, then we'll come back and um, finish up. You think probably July or something? I hope so. I hope so. And, well, yeah, asking them and then I go. Right. I, I'm sorry, I take the question. There was another thing, uh, the DOT was another angle, and we are up to date with them on all of the market or the research they need to do, but we will go back with them after that is approved and the, the whole site plan is approved because there's nothing more to do until it is. So that's that's where they're at, the DOT. So then after that, then it's, it's it'd probably be ready for construction then. Oh, sure. I mean, we, we do have a deadline, right? That's um, by the end of the year. So we'd like to keep moving. <sighs> McDonald's being the first, and then we will, you know, work these out as we go. So any, any other questions for me? It's like we've got about 18,000 square feet of retail with about 125 parking spots. So. 120, 120, I thought, but sure. 120? Okay. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, if I could, I just want to, to clarify, because this says update. Is the board being asked to approve anything today? No. It's no, just, it was just an update on the kind of activity to try to um, engage okay. with different tenants. I have asked uh, Mr. Diario Sr., if he can come to the July meeting, because at the July meeting, um, Business Flair will also have prepared the report on what would be a good mix use, uh, business use for that property. So I would like for everybody to be here so we can have some good discussions on how to move forward. We're committed to update you monthly, so we're all on the same page. Okay, okay great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All righty, um, down item D, Timothy and Viola Postumla. We need C, we're on C. 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 Oh. C. Senior. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and no. Mr. Altman is not here, but I'd like to start the discussion, or unless you want to move on and wait until he's back, it's up to you. That might be right. Yeah, why don't, why don't, yeah, let's move to D then maybe. So this is <clears throat> the second of two grants, um, pretty much the same circumstances, only this one was a little bit different because I was made aware of it via, via an email uh, from the applicant in March. It took me probably three plus weeks to locate the file. I was unaware of it, but I did locate the file. I found the paperwork and the appropriate documentation stating that the grant had been approved, um, and it's a building and site enhancement grant. 
I reached out to the owners, which are the Postumas, and asked them if they could just elaborate on what happened, why did why for such a long time, um, and at that juncture, I wasn't really sure what the the end result was for the building. Um, and they explained to me that because of COVID, I believe there was some illness involved. Um, and if you see, there's a quote in here that I'll read to you quickly um, from Mr. Postma. And this was from the March 14th, 22 email. It says, after issues with COVID and our builder, we finally finished the project and received our certificate of completion, which I have um, in my packet. Um, I know it's been a long haul. I would like to know if the money for our facade upgrade grant is still available to us. Um, <clears throat> I since that point met with Katerina, we spoke with Postmas, um, and obviously wanted to bring this back in front of you to ask your consideration. Um, the, this is, these are two after photos, Amazing. which are just stunning in comparison to what that is. This is in the central CRA. It's very close to Ward Temple ME. Um, it's, uh, it, it's just a, a night and day project. Um, this is a live work situation for, for them. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would like very much for you to consider this because it's just such a tremendous improvement to this area. Wow, that's... It's that's pretty impressive. Isn't it though? And I, I hope we can reward that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would like to make a motion to approve the disbursement of $10,000 to the applicant for building and site enhancement grant for the property located at 417 10th Avenue Drive West. Second. Okay, more discussion? I think thank you. I mean, God it's just bless beautiful. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank you. And I realize some of this. I mean, I think we've had an obviously COVID. We're still, but we're getting to the end of that now. Yeah, right. and I'm glad. Yeah. Um, this came almost simultaneously, and I did not. I didn't realize the ramifications that were involved in COVID. I mean, I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of layers, but these people persevered. And, and thankfully they did. It, yeah. And well, God I think them. we need to stress though. I mean, we do have rules for a reason. I mean, and, yeah, and but we're we, not inflexible. Can I, we uh, have, um, can I come to their offense? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm yeah, not. They had a staff that they, there's oh. all their tools and uh, yes, trailer, he, he never mentioned that to me. Oh, yeah. And, and did they, they didn't even mention that, did they? No, ma'am. So, I was referring to going forward. No, no, no. I know. I know. I know. Not them. I'm just, just yeah. Them well, let, let me let me add to your comment, which is Maybe excellent. Right. Um, we, as staff, myself particularly, um, have set up um, means to reach out to them after the 45 days. After you know, just to make sure we're on plane. If we're not on plane, and they send in um, a letter, an extension letter, certainly. We could approve that depending on what the circumstances are, but that's that's on, on me. I mean, so. Well, I'm glad. It's beautiful. It is. Isn't it? They did an awesome job. It is. Um, it is. It, it, aren't there very many other projects out there? No, know? not of this, not of this so nature. This, this should be. came in at the same, practically at the same time. I was yeah. like, what? Yeah, because they, they they both probably kind of caught up and right where you come. But, uh, you know, they're finished. They're oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. And the landscaping, they didn't, I know. They, they didn't take this picture. Crazy. This oh, the the landscape. I don't even know how they did it. I want them to come help me do my yard. I thank you. Karen, what, um, what, uh, it says they're, they intend to live work. What, what are they, what are they going to do? Has a, he has, I think, a woodworking business or uh -huh. something. Oh. Or it's Is like a right? craft. Still yeah. Working. Yeah, wow, and I don't think it's it's real established yet, but uh -huh. they're working toward that end goal. But they're that's, living there. Please. Yeah, that's, yeah, they are. That's fantastic. It is so, fantastic. So we had a, a motion. Did we vote yet? No. I think yes. we all. I think we all voted. Didn't we? Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Let's just. Well, can we can we vote again? 
<laughs> yeah, if you want do we have to give them double the money then, though? Uh, while you, we have Karen up here, do, are you handling the unchain our fence? I see that. Yes, yes. Peter has um, not come Chris in. and I actually are doing that. Oh. You want us to I mean, address that? No, now? I'm, Mr. Chairman, I was just thinking if we're waiting for Peter to yeah. come back in and he hasn't come oh, back no. in, let's, let's go ahead. strike while the iron's hot and we got her in front of us. There you go. Sounds good to me. So in your packet, you have um, the revised Unchain My Fence program. Chris and I actually had been working on this for some time. And since my new partner in crime is here, um, he was just great help to get his insight, his ideas, and his skill set. Um, between that and working with Katerina, um, I think we pulled together an even better program than, than the original. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a super successful program. Um, and then in summary, I just, you know, briefly want to say, and then I'll, I'll let Chris have the floor. Um, this grant has been revised in order to reach all three CRA districts. Mm -hmm. It was previously only in the 14th district, 14th street, excuse me. Um, and basically it's to ease current economic drivers that have increased the cost of materials, delivery, and labor. Um, revisions to the document are consistent with the format of other language in the grant, such as the sections broken out, numbered, um, and the same language um, as the new restaurant grant is and has been approved. So as we come before you with these grants, um, just know that the formatting, the language, things of that nature will be consistent throughout all the programs that we have. Um, Chris, you want to take it from there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, I want to thank KK and Katerina for, you know, uh, bringing me in. One, two, this was like our first collab yeah. on something. It was like, you know, almost the first day I think they, <laughs> they brought it to me. So it was good. We didn't kill each other. Either. Yeah. So <laughs> no, it just, it speaks to, um, you know, how, how, how we complement each other and uh, we're, we're there for each other. So um, she, she picked on some of the things. The other points are basically that we up the budget, you know, or we up the funding uh, from 2000 to 6,000 for the front linear section. If you had a corner lot that um, increased from 3000 to $8,000 and we still have the same split um, between the CRA and the applicant, which is an 80-20 split, 80 to the, the CRA and 20% is responsible from the applicant themselves. So um, another thing we modified is that we had a, um, let's see, no modification. I think it was at six years previously. We just, just made it five years just to make it seem a little, you know, easier to to, to think about. Um, we also you know, are requiring a couple quotes for estimates so we can see, you know, what that, what those costs would be um, to us. And, um, you know, that's, that'll help us determine, you know, what, what area they're looking at doing as well. Um, let's see here. Uh, any property? Oh, so we also added that if there's like unpaid property taxes or unpaid bills or things like that, that has to be uh, taken care of prior to us uh, approving that, that funding for them. Um, and then we have a list of ineligible projects within it um, and requiring a notari notarization document from the owner themselves. This is in, in the- a tenant. Yeah, if it's a tenant that's coming and applying for it, we're we're okay with that, but it has to have the owner's approval to do the to do the work on their property. Um, so we're asking for a, a notarized letter from that from that owner. 
Um, let's see here. Um, written communica communication between the applicant and CRA. That's just, you know, we want to keep, keep tabs on where they are on the process and things like that. So, you know, if we don't hear from them, we'll reach out as well um, on this kind of thing. And um, a tighter, a little tighter process on, on dispersing the funds and a addition of detail regarding the expiration of the grant. So we don't want the, it out there for nine, 12, two years, you know, and then them come back to us, oh, we have this. So we put like a, I think it was a 60 to nine, no, 120, 180 days, 180 days time frame. And if, you know, in that, if they're not able to get it done or they can, they can reach out and we can extend that. If, if need be so those are those are the major changes to to the agreement to the grant and um, we also had legal look at it and mm -hmm. um, Scott had gotten back with us and said he had no issue with the language and right. so that's what we got it. mr. chairman do we need a motion to accept this or accept the changes or do we just we, we go forth and send no more revise, oh um, we June 2 2022 Okay, well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the updated grant program known as Unchain My Fence for the city of Bradenton, all CRA areas. Second. Okay, that is a motion and a second. All in favor, Chair? say it. Mr. Chair, I just want it under discussion, and um, I, I wanted, no, no, I just wanted to bring up, we have, again, talking about simultaneously, we received two requests for chain from potentially nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted, and that got, got me thinking that in this grant, when we wrote it, uh, even from before, it just mentions commercial properties and residential. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to throw out do we need to include anything? Would the board like to see nonprofits be brought back on a case by case basis? I, I just want to I just wanted to throw it out because two of them within a day difference in this week they reached out to us. Well a not for profit can be considered a business. It's just Co a, a for profit business. Right. right. So I would think they, they would have they every would right to apply and then we look at them on a case by case basis. Um uh, just because they're nonprofit, they still pay property taxes, right? No. Some of them, no, they don't. Some well, I think folks. if they don't pay property taxes, then, well, you know. I think, it, I think it would be incumbent upon us to look at the area where it is and how it may encourage other property owners in that area. Because... Pam, Pam did you have something? Well, maybe if we... we came up with the criteria specifically or stipulations specifically for nonprofits, but I, I, I don't think we're prepared to do anything like that today, but no. just giving it more thought. I don't know. You, you were supposed to get uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, guidance on this from the state uh, on, I thought, on uh, if we can legally do this. Yeah. I reached out to our attorney um, to get his legal opinion, especially because one of them is a church. So I just wanted to see, is there any concern that CRA funding would go towards a grant program to a religious institution? Mr. Rudisell, if you'd like to talk about our discussion. Yeah, we talked about it last night. I've not had a chance to look at it yeah. yet. I know there are some um, constitutional provisions related to providing funding to uh, religious institutions. So that's something that we have to look at if, if we have, you know, a church as an applicant, uh, as an example. Okay, well that, to me, a church, while it is not for profit, it is a different Correct. for profit. Correct, it, it's uh -huh. a different so, category. Mr. Chairman, what I will do is I will withdraw my motion and ask that staff look into this further and bring it back to us. Okay. Uh, my, my my thinking is that, I mean, just a, another train of thought is, you know, chain link fences are ugly. That's why we have a program is to get rid of them. And should we really nitpick over whether it's an ugly not-for-profit or 
or an ugly for-profit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd like to see her keep the motion on the floor, but just to bring up the nonprofit later, yeah. after we to get to revise opinion. it. Yeah. Just to just to take. Can, we've can, never had nonprofits in there before, for, to my knowledge. So let's just check? leave it the way it is, and then we can do that later, once we get an opinion. That's, if we can even do it, we might not even be able to do it. You know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> okay. Play, if if I could just interject. Um, it it's, won't be considered for just one grant. If we do it for one grant program, we need to do it for all of the grant programs. So it, with that being said, um, what if we put a stipulation in for the time being that it's, it would be solely the, the, the CRA boards, you know, to their discretion on a case-by-case -case basis until such time we can come up with what you know I, I'm just I don't throwing think that out hurt anybody for us to consider this at our July meeting and get more um, a, a more of a comfort level that we're not crossing boundaries here that we don't want to cross understood is there anybody waiting right now we have for had us to get this passed but we don't have any applications in yet. Not as of late, but but we would have to address the person that's coming forward saying they want to fill out that application. Well, uh, so Karen, does this, My this, this document does not include not-for-profits, right? That's now. correct. Okay, so no. let's pass this. My recommendation then, would be if we can approve can. that, um, in case somebody does apply right. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll look into the non-profit. I don't, I, I don't believe that we need to have the nonprofit in every grant. Every grant is different, and we can decide where, what language we include. But because it did come up this week for, and one of them is for a chain for a church. So, and we had already posted the agenda, we had already prepped up, so we didn't have, so I apologize for bringing it okay. today, but um, I, I thought it was important for us to begin addressing that. So I, that would be my recommendation, to approve it, and then July, okay we can come back and have more discussion and amend it potentially. So we've not Ms. ever provided this for any nonprofits. We, we have in the past. We have? Not the chain link fence grant. Well, oh, we've, well, not the yeah. chain link, but we have some of yes, our on, grants. Uh, yes. Renaissance. Something for Humane? Renaissance Humane on Humane Society. Yeah, Humane Society. We, mm -hmm. we did a fence for them. Yes. Well, what, 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 why did we do it then? What, what, I mean, if it was a different... Well, it was 14th right, Street? It was right on the 14th Street corridor. I mean, they, they, they were doing a lot of remodeling and painting and everything, and we wanted to throw a little... I, I remember it. Do they own that or do they lease that? They own it. They own it. Yeah. Mr. Rudisil, is it better for us to approve this and bring something back or just wait and have it all done at the same time? Well, I think it's okay because what I heard... Um, Katarina saying was that the grant as written only applies to residential and commercial property and so as long as there is an understanding at the board level that that does not include uh, not-for-profits and that it would have to come back and be amended in order to include not-for-profits then I think that okay. that's fine to proceed that way all right then I and then okay. I'll I've withdrawn my motion. I didn't hear anybody the second accept or not, but the motion is to read on. I didn't accept your. <laughs> so keep it on. Well, no, I think the cleanest way to do this mm -hmm. is for me to withdraw my motion and this that have the maker of the motion withdraw, the second withdraw, and then a new motion put forward specific. Okay, I'll withdraw my second. Okay, so somebody else craft one. Oh. You are going to craft like it. Like Mr. Yeah. Riz, what, whatever Mr. Rizzo just yeah. said, I'll make that motion. So move this. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I like the way he worded it though, with right. that stipulation. Exactly. It's, it's it's legal. Yeah. yeah. It's only a, it's only applying to residential and commercial. Residential and commercial, and we'll have to amend it if we wanted to go further. Would you repeat the motion, please? I think it's a motion to approve the updated grant program unchain my fence with the understanding that it will only be applicable to residential and commercial properties and not to not-for-profit owned properties okay. so moved. Okay, 
Okay. So we have second. Have a motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. In the meantime, we need to figure out what, what was the thought behind doing it for other not-for-profits, and then that might be the guy. Right. Well, and we're moving forward, so we just want from now on to be consistent and be fair to everybody also. So, but we will work with Mr. Rudisell to get all the legal background and come back to you um, about the non-profit component. Um, so Mr. Altman is here, so um, Chair, would, would it be okay to move back to yeah. 7C? Proposal for redevelopment on 9th Avenue. Um, throughout the last year that I've been here, one of the first things that was brought to my attention I was, was about the vibrant uh, business district on 9th Avenue, on MLK, uh, years ago. And uh, I've heard it from several people. For it's, it's, it's near and dear to the hearts of the community. Um, and for several reasons, it went away. Um, but I, th I believe this is a great opportunity as we're looking to revitalize the central CRA that this becomes a project that we we start now to look at it um, and look at how what are the opportunities to redevelop the, the MLK business corridor. Um, when I was sharing that idea with uh, Mr. Altman as he was um, giving me a briefing on the other project, so he said that his company um, it's something within their expertise that uh, they would be able to do an analysis for us on to look at that corridor, and we will, you know, tell them which from which street to this to what street we're looking at. Um, but to look at it and make recommendations: Do we need to purchase property and make assemblage? Um, do we need to change our zoning? Do we need to give better incentives? so that people that would consider moving somewhere else, bringing their business there. Um, brought it up to the Central CRA Advisory Board yesterday, and they're in favor of us moving forward to a project like this. Um, and I think, again, and as you're looking at all the different things, components that are going to be happening, I think that would be a great program. And if we do hire, it's part of the scope of work in the contract that we have with Business Flair. Uh, but I still wanted it to bring before the board to get your approval um, on, on your thoughts on this project. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. If I may, before you get started. Oh. Um, I don't know if you're aware, there's a model of the Black Business District um, at the Heritage House, at least it was, the Heritage House Museum um, which is on State College of Florida. That might be something you might want to take a look at. Um, in fact, I'm going to go and see if it's still there too, um, just to get an idea of the history. Great. Thank you. I guess if you all are looking at me to mm -hmm. speak to this, uh, I, I can only say that our suggestions that we have are that as to all three of the CRA districts, that this is the time to actually get visioning and uh, get moving on all fronts, uh, and particularly after this morning's discussion from the Department of Transportation, because you know, getting funding for infrastructure and major improvements in districts that don't have the, the budget just in terms of the tax increment, uh, the goal, I think, from our standpoint is to be able to show some renderings uh, after having uh, both uh, the analytics from the fresh eyes from the outside, but looking at the historical uh, uh, models and also reaching out in the community. So one of the takeaways that we had from a little discussion about this last night at the advisory uh, board assembly was um, making sure that the people who live there were incorporated into the solutions. So, some uh, some redevelopment says bring something in that's working somewhere else. Uh, I know that uh, uh, that there are businesses 
uh, that are black owned or Hispanic businesses that are successful in other parts of Tampa Bay. So part of the strategy could be recruiting, but the other part of the strategy is really to uh, find a way for the, uh, the community to uh, be, uh, to get back to that historical uh, participation that they've had. So we would like to put something together for Katarina within her budget, and I think I've had this discussion with her before because our, our contract is both with the city and the CRA, and it's for a straight dollar amount. And our goal is to make sure that we show you performance at, because we would like to continue our relationship with you uh, as sort of a, a auxiliary, uh, ancillary uh, part of the team. So um, I don't know that we have a figure. I mean, if you want to say to, uh, if, I don't know what you're asking for, Katarina, but uh, in terms of authorizations of how much money to spend, but I think I've seen that you put uh, a lot of that back to, to her and uh, to the staff. Um, we certainly have a desire to take what we have this year to spend time and effort in each of the three districts holding public uh, uh, outreach, talking to stakeholders, and also uh, surveys when they're needed, uh, and participating in all that. That being said, there are other companies and other partners that you have that are already doing some of that. So the real goal is to coordinate all those efforts, whether they're external efforts, opportunities for grants, uh, and the local, uh, you know, vested folks to just be part of that team. So um, if you're looking for a number, I can throw one out to say not to exceed, to get us moving if you think that a motion's required for that, or if the, if the board is uh, so inclined, as she's mentioned, we have a contract, and if you'll let her direct me for a while, uh, and see what we can produce. I think that can that can allow us to move quicker uh, through the process as we go, and keep you posted. And uh, so, what's your pleasure? I guess. Well, Katarina, what? How would you like to? Um, I I don't I don't know what the cost will be. I know I kind of had asked an approximate number. Um, so. I'm just trying to make things expeditious. Um, I don't know if you want to give me an, uh, an, you know, an up to not to exceed and allow me to coordinate a scope of work with them, however you'd prefer. I just... What would you... I'm just thinking right now, like the scope of work, um, where would you... Would you I'm assuming you'd start at like 9th, 9th and 9th, and go to what, to what cross street, 27? Will you go that far? Would you not go that far? 9th Street West. Yes. The 9th Street East along. Uh, okay, okay. Well, that's. And I forgot to mention the good part of it is that half of it will be from the Bradenton CRA and half of it oh, will yeah. be from the Central CRA. So that allows us um, to not just tax one of the districts. That's true. Well, we would be happy to give an update at your next CRA meeting if you want to give a figure, whether it's $5,000 not to exceed. We can at least expend whatever time as fast and as much effort, and you can, you can look at the value of that and uh, what the next steps are and take it one step at a time. Uh, but, you know, um, it, we're on a time in billing, and... And I'm uh, so excited to be here. I forget to put my time down sometimes. So. <laughs> That's all right. That's good. That's good. We like that. Um, all right. Do you need a motion right now? I leave it up to you. I, I mean, or, I don't know. I just need direction on what to do for sure. Well, I mean, can the motion just be that we authorize you to move forward on... Uh, on this project? Uh, on, on the concept of, uh, you know, what it would take to redevelop ninth and then to come up with some kind of quote at the next meeting? Okay. We would like to start now if we but, can. Well, that's, that's what the I'm only problem is September, th the contract, current contract, and September 30th. So if we wait until July 20th, that only allows them two months to put something together versus starting now. So... Do you want us to? It seems as though everybody seems yeah. 
interested comfortable. in kind of moving forward with this. Uh, 5000 seems reasonable. Not to exceed 5000 Um, I, I mean... Uh, is that, I'm do you think, are you comfortable? Do you think you can... I'll listen to what motion, you have to say. If the motion says until we give a report, or interim report, whatever, <laughs> at the next meeting, you can see how how, how you feel that our time and effort, uh, the value is, because there are always next steps and mm -hmm. things that we want to do. So I'm just trying to see us be able right. to start now and be able to give you something that you can see uh, to feel better about whatever, and then we can refine our cost estimates and would like to bring as well to that next meeting a uh, strategy for the other two districts and so we can show you how we would like to uh, 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 play out uh, the uh, contract that we have through September. So the 5K, if I can, the up to 5K, what, what would that entail as an initial type of overall yeah. scope of work? Outreach and some initial uh, uh, design. Uh, we'll bring some initial design concepts and some ideas. You'll see something in writing of ways uh, that might be envisioned. That can become a tool then to take it back out and see how it's reacted to. So it's sort of like a step-by-step -step process. Show a little something, get some response, refine that, uh, understand what properties you have. Uh, maybe there's some entry features. Uh, maybe there's some uh, streetscaping involved and maybe there's also some business recruitment and some job training or maybe there's some things that are in the capital improvement plan already that we can try to tie in and locate uh, whether it's job training or whatever at a location so we'll try to look as globally as we can give you a good update so really it's just uh, so recommendations some visual and some community outreach yeah. as of now not to exceed up to 5k so. are we okay going kind of loose with no real contract just well we do they, they have a contract we're already we're just expanding uh, we're just changing the scope a little bit okay right so they're under uh you know time and, and hours okay contract now we're we're giving another an additional another project yeah. you're giving me a little rope a piggyback right. okay uh so no no change of price or really no change of the scope what we're okay for, for i have a motion to improve up to five thousand dollars for Canary to work with you to uh, uh, develop a plan for this. Okay. Yeah. That's motion and second. Um, and I, I just would comment. I, I I think that that corridor has a lot of potential right now. I mean the, the 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 with what's going on in the economy and building. I, I just went by a, a, an area yesterday over 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 just in a, a neighborhood over by like where the Girl Scout house is, mm -hmm. and there's like three three houses going up in not a great neighborhood but you know and they're they're, they're like the houses that are in one. the Wears Creek they're mm -hmm. really nice cute little cottages three in a row it's like things are happening right now mm -hmm. I think that we can just move quickly you want to ride right. the wave I ride the wave absolutely so you're going to call favor. for the vote oh. Aye. all in favor to ride the wave mm -hmm. aye. aye aye opposed <laughs> okay Moving bound to E, guidance on CRA owned property, 413 10th Avenue East. Um, this is uh, one of the rental uh, properties that we have. Um, it's uh, currently we're receiving $775 um, and it's on a month-to-month -month basis. With all of our rentals, with your previous feedback, we've asked them not to renew the lease because in the future we don't know what we may want to do with the property, so we wanted more flexibility on that. So as of now, it's on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, it, it has A request has come to us. Um, the resident has been approved by the Sarasota Housing Authority to receive Section 8 housing. And um, if, for, in order to enter into that agreement, the the resident we, ha we the resident needs to find a residence for with a 12 month commitment. So the rent is going to go up to approximately fourteen hundred dollars from the seven seventy five. However, anytime you deal with Section Eight, um, you need to bring them uh, up to ADA compliance. And um, this, this resident removed all the carpeting without 
giving us prior um, anything, uh, any notice or whatever. So she removed all the carpet, so there's no carpet, and there's nothing right now, and she's requesting flooring because she's disabled. Um, we would need to bring up everything up to ADA compliance. Our estimate is that it's going to cost about thirty to 40000 for us to do that. So um, we're here because uh, to get your guidance on whether you would like us to approve and move forward with that or, um, or not. Because we need to give her an answer and if, she, if it's not with our property so she can find another property with a Section 8. Do we have any kind of estimate of what it would take to bring the property up to ADA compliance? Um, the internal estimate that we kind of came up knowing the property between the bathrooms, the flooring, the entryway, every, we, we believe around 30K will, will be that. Maybe. Kitchen, everything we would need to. 88 grand. And then in the future, in a year or two, you all may want to decide to dispose of it. So then all that, so that increase in money. That Would it, I think, be more prudent to perhaps assist her in finding an ADA compliance section eight acceptable housing and perhaps assist her with moving into that? She shouldn't have well, a hard time. She's already been awarded. would take care of that if, okay. yeah. if, in fact, she didn't get a year lease. What, because what? they've approved her. They have a list of ADA compliance. Well, I mean, no, this was one of those houses that we weren't even sure we wanted to keep. Right. 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 And right. that's why we went to the month to month. Right. And I'm not sure that throwing $30,000 into a house when we're not even, again, I don't think it was the direction of the board to want to keep it. It was, we were just trying to figure out what we wanted to do with it. I'm not inclined to put another additional $30,000 into a home if, in, in fact, she has her voucher and can go and, yeah. and I mean, if, if, if there's anything that we could do to assist her with finding something, I'm not opposed to doing that, but, I, I, I think that, that we've discussed before about, um, you know, getting out of the landlording business. Yeah. Trying to turn these houses over to single family homeowners, maybe a first time buyer, you know, and then, and then taking that money and putting it in a pool and put it towards an assemblage on ninth, say. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are we in any trouble here with fair housing at all? As far as. There's no lease. No. Well, there's no lease, but. There's no lease. Okay. We, we, if I'm remembering correctly, we had several of these properties that we knew were going to be coming. We needed, we either needed to get seriously into the landlord business and, and do what we needed to do, or we needed to get out of the landlord business. And I believe this board's option what they they were like we don't want to be landlords anymore so putting thirty thousand dollars into something sounds like we're going to want to continue to be a landlord and i don't think that that's what we want to do right and we even haven't been a landlord because we've only been charging 775 dollars a month so we're not even doing that well yeah. <laughs> i looked through her their leases and in, uh, in the past so in 20 14 is when I had the first one, $700. And then it went 750 in 2016, and then it went 775 in 2017, and it hasn't been raised since. So I, I don't know the history on this, but I agree. I, I th We're not good at it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I agree. I make a motion that we sell the property. Mm. We would have to. First of all. Yeah, <laughs> Let's figure out what to do with this tenant. I'd rather well, see a habitat for your or something. So my recommendation no, would be if, if, if the board wants us not to enter into an agreement, and I would need that guidance as a board, um, then uh, Mr. Mignon, with his real estate experience, um, his next project will be to appraise the three houses, this one, mm -hmm. the former substation, 
and the one that's across from Lincoln Village to review their condition, come back with a proposal on what is required, and then we would need to go out for any type of disposal. We have to follow state statute, advertise it, and start that process after he kind of gives you an, a presentation. The, but I do need guidance if I would enter into okay, a set. So do you want a motion to say that we are not interested <coughs> in, in engaging in a yearly lease? We would encourage the tenant to find other appropriate housing for what her voucher in, allows her to have. And uh, I mean, she she's going to need an apartment that's that's got some sort of ADA compliance with it. And then start that and then have information brought back on all three of these properties that we have been hanging on to and we don't want to hang on to. Yeah, I feel like we have to specify that we just don't want to have any annual leases. We want to get, not because of we, we would have to do the handicap part. Well, it's only based on we don't want to be again, landlords. I, I, I think that we have made it clear that we don't want to be in the landlord business. Mm -hmm. And we're not kicking someone out. She actually has money. Right. Mm -hmm. move on yeah. You. right yeah so so I mean that's that's that is my motion that we work at not being in the landlord business and have our new staff member who has expertise in this to bring back us a plan Okay. I'll second it. Okay, that's, that's a motion and a second. I mean, we ought to be kind about it. Yeah, we should give them 60, 90 days or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm saying is we need to have these things appraised. They're a property. They have to be appraised. They have to be advertised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that that's the state law. Yeah. yeah. You know, we don't have a choice in that, so they have to be advertised. So right. that's what I'm saying when we sell it. We advertise it. If you want some information by appraisal before, fine. It's probably a waste of money because the market will dictate it anyway. Mm -hmm. so no, we'll do it for free. Well, yeah. <clears throat> what I'm saying is is that we're, we're, start, we're starting to repeat ourselves. We don't want to be in the landlord business. I, we got it. So we want to sell the properties. Right. What do we got to do to sell the properties? We got to notify it. We got to notify uh, by it, it, the, the, the paper to sell them so that we're legal and we get be kind to the person that's there and give them time or whatever they need. Well, the only thing I would say is if we're going to do that and we're going to sell, then you got to be fine probably with if it's an investor then that's just going to come flip it that's okay but i would like to kind of see something maybe like a habitat for humanity that encourages home ownership and it stabilizes the neighborhood a little bit better than somebody who buys it fixes it up and then turns it into a rental or we can <coughs> stipulate that they become uh, 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 homesteaded so, yeah. so i think that's the next step the only people that's going to be homesteaded yeah. can that's, bid on it that's the next that, that is the next step I mean, so we have a motion and a second we're going to vote on. But on, on that, because my, my thinking is, I mean, Habitat's got a mission, as, as we do. It doesn't have to be Habitat. I just, I'm somebody. Just saying, yeah. I, I, I know, but because I, I, we've done stuff with them before, is that my thought is, okay, we have an asset. We've, we've used it. We've been, now we're going to take it. And, and, and that we take the asset and we reallocate the money. We take the three of them and then see if we can get an assemblage on ninth that we're trying to. And, and go ahead and, and do something on ninth, and then see if we can turn that over. But but when we sell, when we put the property out for surplus property, can't we specify that this is not uh, an investment? This right. is not for investment purposes. Where we prefer, where we want to get into. Uh, can we specify that it's for a single family? We can do. Uh, we can do a Lura. Yeah. We can do whatever yeah. at that point. But right. those are will be the next recommendations right. that we and will pass, bring forward. Pass pass a reward on to some yeah. young family or whatever. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> but we just keep moving forward. I think Dan has a comment. Yeah. I think just this morning we were told that on June 30th we're going to hear some info from HUD. So, I mean, there's some things out there. So, so let's just we, get, vote on our motion now, maybe. Yes. That we're not, we're getting out of it. Mm -hmm. we, we want more information to be able to make an informed right. decision, but we are, we are not, not interested yet. in continuing as landlords. Great. That's the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Rocking and rolling here. Where's Mad, right? <laughs> <laughs>
No, it's it's good. It's good. Okay, um, we are moving through this agenda. Budget priorities for <coughs> 22 and 23. No we're, more. We're almost, we're almost there. The, the, <laughs> the longest part is done. Um, this is more of a reminder that we are during the budget process season. Um, and just like the city, the CRA has to do their the next fiscal year budget. Um, I would like, I need to hear some of the priorities and vision that this board has. Uh, whether you're prepared to do it today, to give me can some we, feedback. Can we just set up an appointment with you and I would discuss with you and then have you Combine all and yes, bring it back. All the information that was that's, shared with you? That's what we did last year. This was just my reminder that we really need to do it in the next. I, I and I feel like we're starting <coughs> to get, you know, between Flair, between mm -hmm. the HUD. Maybe we'll be a little bit more informed a little bit later. But that's the way I. And we like can always amend plan, I mean, yeah. priorities, but at least if I know what are some critical ones that we know as of today. of this period then i would like to capture those mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i encourage you and even if you're not available to meet with me in person and we can do it through zoom whatever is the easiest way to get your feedback so that i can make some recommendations um in august w we will need to do to hold another meeting in addition uh, in addition to the one we're holding um because i would like to present the budget on august 8th when the city council is already meeting give you a first draft and then get your feedback and then come back on the august 24th so that it's final so then that the city can include the cra budget in the advertisement that they do okay all right you already submitted we had to do a preliminary um budget so it's not probably going to change the up some capital expenditures or something. It, I mean, it will change. Why do we have to wait to August? What can we do in July? Those are the, the those are we all you, you can, but the, we've traditionally always done. Um, that's just what we've always done. Yeah, it, no, for, for government. And I, I've always thought we've done it with a tighter of window before the se September requirement. No. We've got to have those 501 meetings at, at the first of September. <coughs> I ha so no. like it doesn't give us much time to, to negotiate or change, so should we do something in July? We will discuss the budget in July, oh, okay. um, but I thought that it would be, but I don't know that I'm going to have everybody's feedback and the time to put a good combined final. So I was going to bring back, you know, if you don't, I mean, I can try. I just don't know that with our timeline that we're going to have enough time without two meetings in August. I don't have a problem with two meetings in August. I don't have a problem meeting with you and discussing any ideas that, you know, I heard roundabouts were really successful in Sarasota. Maybe we got to look at doing one here. Mm -hmm. I like roundabouts. So I look forward. We'll um, in my contact, so I'm not like flirting with y'all. I just want. I will have. I will ask. I will send you out some Sorry. dates. Um, I, and I realized I'm looking at them going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it any way other than I had an eyelash in my contact. Um. So I will reach out to all of you. I just I I. It's that time of year again. So. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the ball moving. We're doing great. And lastly, we have our. Vi I would like to request that we proceed um, immediately with visioning sessions. Our three plans, master plans, are very old. One is from 1994, one from 2007, and 2009. And they were great at the time. They. I can't believe you're bringing that up. I am. I w it's in our budget, but I really need us, I really would request that uh, to go out for an RFP, hire a consultant, and start the process. Um, I, if, if you're all, um, I, I need guidance. Do you if need you, a motion? Because I'm all in favor of it. I would like to, to know also, would you like one master plan change or three at a, the same time? Like, there's pros and cons for each one of those, but... Um, I think we have to do them all. I'd say do them all. I'll tell you, so 
I was always told when I got involved with the you know affordable mm-hmm. development, you don't touch the master plan. It's like, so so that's just what they said at FRA. Mm-hmm. I, I know. Now, now the last one, I I talked to everyone I could, and they're like, no, that's not. That's like well, that's what you've well, always your said. Master, <laughs> your master plan is not like yeah. the Ten Commandments. Well, in the you right, have now, to in the past they have they have absolutely pounded on the desk that you don't do. It. I mean, I'm I'm not making this up. But if you do it. It, you know, you it's endanger plan, everything. It's it's, it's not it's, the plan. It, it, it's you can't a, do it. It's a suicide note. It, and then, but now, it, now it, the FRA's oh, changed what they're up. saying. I'm I'm fine. I, I just want to go with the agency. Well, well, I just think the vision would be different 10, 15 years ago than it should yeah. be now. So I really think we should. Yeah, right. I mean, right. well, what they're, what they're, 15, what they're 20 cautioned. years ago, you, people wanted pay phones at gas stations. And Papa Cannon was number right. one employer. <laughs> What what FRA cautioned before was that if you touch any part of the plan, if you modify the plan, it gives the sister agency, the county, right. the opportunity to opt out and say we no longer want to contribute to the CRA. It's their 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 ex facto. It's it's dissolved. That's that's what they've always told us. Now they've changed that at the at like the last conference, and and I go with the. As I understand it, Palmetto has revised theirs, and the county approved it. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, new information. So I can so. proceed with um, with an RFQ with a consultant for the budget. It is in the budget for a consultant to assist us with this program, and let's do it. Make it happen right. for all three of them. Make it so. Yes. Is that because I don't do think it does yeah. any good to do just one right. and another and another. I think there's some synergy between the, it's the areas while they have their individual strengths and weaknesses, they are all abutting each other. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you start talking about getting people for charrettes and stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. getting three different ones as opposed to one, I, I, I yeah, I, I think we do all three. And it will be, uh, it will be more cost effective to do one with three than three different ones right. also mm-hmm. okay okay Great. i got awesome. i got it all right that's it on my end oh no that's not it on my end <laughs> just wanted um to get your um uh, uh permission i would like to apply for leadership manatee and um, i would like your permission to apply and if selected there are certain days that i would have to attend with them so before i apply i just want to make well, sure in the past it's always been on a wednesday mm-hmm. oh yeah. <laughs> okay, <I'm not> <laughs> i don't know I, I don't know any details i don't even I know i think it's a i think it would be a great thing for her to experience because i had people that were born here and when they did it they said I never knew that about mm-hmm. our community. And I think the networking think in my position would be very beneficial I've for the CRAs. Here, I've been an instructor at two others. Uh, I think it was great. Okay. We, do we know what Wednesday it is? If it's the first. Oh, one it's once a month. It's I once think. a month, I know, and it's, it's a, on a Wednesday. It's a long day. The first Wednesday. It is a big time Wednesday commitment. Wednesday? But I think it would be w- time well when, spent. When does it start, Katarina? Is it this, this year, fall, next, probably. or what? It starts in the fall. Yeah, I think it's uh, October or something. So we might your change. It's due this week or next week. So okay. I just wanted, but I do need you know your approval before yeah. I apply. So I wanted to bring it forward. We can always, I mean, we've got meetings lined up. You know, we can move the council CRA meetings around. I mean, we have to change, you know, we have to well, Not the city council. Well, you don't need to change city council for me. Well, you know, you know what I mean. There's, yeah. there's yeah. two council meetings a month. Right. Find out when the meeting, when the, when the things are. Okay. Okay, thank you. Back in the day, it was the second Wednesday of the month, which is why I never applied to do it locally. But like I said, I've participated with two different groups and been an instructor in them. Yeah, I actually went to, uh, the county used to have it. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Well, they used to have their citizens that, academy. That was basically, the same type of thing. So, um, which I went to. Uh, okay, so uh, anyone else? Other discussion? New business? B. 
You want, want to run this into a fifth hour? No BPD or <laughs> department. <laughs> motion to adjourn. That, that's a motion. That's second. A motion to that's adjourn. That's a motion and a second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> mm.